Hi guys, you know, I decided to do a quick intro even though I'll say hi again when it starts, but I just want to show you this is what we're doing today with some dual forms. I have not applied acrylic nails like I was saying in the video there for a couple years, but I did just want to give you a little glimpse of what it is. It's basically just an almond shape acrylic nail that was made using dual forms. Okay, so I uh, didn't want you to wait to the end to, you know, kind of see the final thing. That way, if you're interested, you'll keep watching. And um, if not, well, if that's not the kind of design you're looking for, you know, you can uh, move on or just get some of the information from this video that you're looking for. Um, I am reviewing some uh, dual forms that I received, or I didn't receive, I paid for them. I bought them off of AliExpress um, and they have uh, numbers and number lines on them. So you'll see those and you'll see them in action and I'll do a quick review of that because obviously they work great. So if you're interested, stay tuned. Oh my gosh, you guys. So today I'm going to do a set of dual form nails. I haven't done them in a long time. I just washed my hands so they look all dry and everything because it's going to get a mess before it looks better anyway. So I figured might as well just start. Uh, real quick, so years ago on my old channel, I used to do a lot of acrylic nails and glitter mix um, swaps because people used to do nail art swaps. And then I was like, well, the best part of the nail art swap really is the glitter mixes, right? Everyone looks forward to those. So I did my own thing. Um, and then it took off from there. Everybody's doing glitter mix swaps and that was great and it was awesome. I had a whole Monday episode that I would do um, glitter mixes. So one of the mixes I'm using today, or the mix I'm using today, came from that swap. Um, and also, seven, eight years ago when I started doing dual forms, there was literally only one company that would make them. It's called YS Nails. And um, I had a whole thing with them because basically they would take your money. They wouldn't send you the dual forms. They're based out of Puerto Rico. The, the cool videos would basically rip you off. And I would always complain about that. People were like, oh, you said, well, you know, I don't want people to get ripped off because really I had to like tell them, okay, I'm gonna make a review on, you know, my YouTube. And uh, this is when I had obviously more subscribers. And they were like, oh, you don't have the, um, what's the word? Uh, like threaten them. I'm like, I'm not threatening you. I'm just telling you what I'm gonna say because this is literally what happened, you know? And then I heard from tons of other people that did the same thing, that they would order them, take the money, would never get the product. Um, so finally they sent it to me and so I hardly, I, after that I wouldn't really use them. I started using like the ASP dual forms or the ones you find on eBay or um, Born Pretty Store or now AliExpress because they're cheap and you get them, right, most of the time and if not there's remedies for that. So, okay, so that's um, what it is. So today I have a couple funny stories, but I want to review these. I had picked these up recently through AliExpress. Um, I didn't know what they were gonna look like or what it said, but here it is. And so I opened them up and it was just dual forms. They were super inexpensive. I have the link, I'll put it in there for you. And they're in a nice case. I didn't know they were gonna come in a nice case. And then I look at them and they're basically YS Nails dual forms because they're a great product. It's just, they would not send them. So hopefully you can see that. They have like little lines on them. So again, seven, eight years ago, the company would make their videos and I started making videos on how to use dual forms and we had tons of videos, right guys? But those are pretty much gone with my old channel. Any old videos I have, I'll have them at the end of the video and in the description box, you can click on those links. So today, I just haven't done nails in, what, almost a couple of years possibly. So I'm gonna use my YS Nails dual forms. I'm gonna go over the, what we need um, and what you would need if you're doing this at home. So you need dual forms, again, ASP, any brand, I say ASP because you can get those really easy at Sally Beauty, but they're kind of expensive for the amount that you get, especially if you can buy them on eBay or other places for like just two bucks and you get, you know, a hundred or three bucks. So you need that. Um, <laughs> this is funny. I could not find my products, right? You know, I, I moved, all this big mess, things are going on. Um, I found some things and I'm like, this is probably going to work. I couldn't even find my brushes, but I knew where they were like before I moved here. So I'm like trying to think of the boxes that I haven't gone through. I still have two boxes in my room that I need to go through. I found this outside, <laughs> not really outside, but in the garage with some other items. I'm like, oh, this is going to work because it's a nail light number eight. It's a great brush. Look how it's all bent. But I'm like, you know what? We need something. So I grabbed it and I, I wouldn't let it go because I know I have other products that I want to use. So I have, um, you'll probably need acetone. I'll come back to the brush in a minute. This acetone I recently bought at the Dollar Tree. It's 100% acetone, so that's really good. But I know I have big jars of like professional acetone. I have big jars of professional alcohol, my NSI nail cleanse. I have, you know, more brushes, like a good brush that um, a couple that people here sent me because they're so nice. Um, all those kind of products. At least I knew where my acrylic was. So I will be using the Omega Acrylic Only Clear because that's all we're gonna need. If you wanna make this fancier and you wanna use pink because you like that for your nail bed, do whatever you like. I'm gonna make this simple and easy, I think. Uh, I was kinda debating what shape to make and I want them a little pointy. So we're gonna make them pointy, 
with some glitter, okay? So I'm just gonna use a clear Omega. I like Omega because it dries very fast. You can order from Nailite, anybody can. They don't uh, discriminate as far as if you have a license or not. Somebody had said that they did, but maybe it depends on the state, I don't know. I'm in California, they're in Florida, and they send it to me, no problem. I'm gonna use the monomer that goes along with that, which I knew where it was. That was also in the garage just because I purposely left it in the garage because it smells really bad. So with monomer, I always keep it nice and tight. I keep it in another tub that's airtight, and then I put it in a cupboard <laughs> normally. So it's in a cupboard in the garage. And since I live out here, like in San Diego, it doesn't really get too hot or too cold, so it should be okay. I might bring it into my room actually because I have a pretty nice uh, closet and I don't think I'll smell it if I keep it tight the way I normally do. You're gonna need some lint-free wipes, of course, um, nail files. Um, those aren't as necessary with the dual forms, but you will wanna shape your nails. So different types of nail files, you're gonna need a buffer, and I can show you different things. This is what I mean is for a buffer. What I mean, this is for to rough up your nail bed so that the acrylic will stick. So like this one has like a foam to it. This is also from Nailite. This is a good one to use. Another little, this one's a little bit harsher. I don't really like to scrub my nail too hard because I don't wanna mess up my nails. So I do that very lightly. Um, along with your acrylic, you're going to need um, some primer. I have a brand new primer from them, but this is like super full and I, but you know, it's kind of like a year old. What does it say? Anyway, if I, yeah, I guess I'm okay um, to use that. But again, whatever primer that goes along with the acrylic system you like to use. Again, Omega dries really nice and fast, so that's why I like it. And I finally, in my mind, I'm like, where? I, I know I have my good brushes and where's also the things I usually lay out to do my nails on so I don't, you know, mess up my table. All those things I couldn't really find, but I did finally I remember there was a box that I shoved in my closet that might have things like that in it. And sure enough, I went in there, I'm like, oh, my brushes. So I have all my brushes here and the things I normally would use. So I got my NSI Pure. You don't need this. You can use alcohol, but since I have this, I'll be using this. Um, and then this is the thing that's usually sitting in front of me whenever I do any of my nail tutorials. And this is where I'd usually pick, you know, brushes from this one's a really pretty little liner Ooh, I don't remember having that um, just all kinds of different things I needed this actually so I was looking for I'm like where is that cute little pusher um, so anyway the one I can't find though is this beautiful brush Leslie oh this one lady here I don't think she follows me anymore at least I haven't seen her around Leslie QQQ sent me a really nice brush and as long as I misplace I'm like where is that brush um, but I'll still use this one to be honest because it's just uh, dual forms if you're doing acrylic nails from start to finish, you know, from scratch, you want a really good brush that's not misshapen. It's probably just misshapen because the way it's been sitting out. So basic things, again, a brush. It's the number eight, number 10 is also a good size. Kalinsky, you can pick those up at Sally Beauty. Probably like a cuticle pusher, something that gives you an area to scrape with also. We're gonna need that. Uh, alcohol or some kind of rubbing alcohol or some kind of sanitizer, basically. You want your acetone. Um, your acrylic powder, acry the monomer that goes along with it, your primer, the dual forms, different um, files, lint-free wipes, and then I have a bunch of these little things because they're basically just to help me out to keep things um, organized. Like when I put out my monomer, I don't want to, you need to decant it, right? So we're going to pour it into something. Also, I'm going to have a glitter mix. So let's talk about that right now. So I have this really cute glitter mix from a gal. Um, Jessica Hernandez and it was called Misa Mores and it's really cute the mix I love it it was just sitting in my craft room for some reason it must have been in something when I moved here and I just left it there it's been on my table for like the last almost a year now so I'm gonna use this it has all kinds of fun things you can make your own glitter mixes guys I'll I don't think I have any more glitter mix videos but if I do I'll link those in the description box so we're gonna do that for the um, artwork here and so okay so let's I'm gonna move this thing to the side Actually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this paper towel. So what I wanted you guys to see is that normally when I get started, I'm gonna take this isopropyl alcohol, 99% alcohol. Uh, I think usually what you get at the store is like 30% or whatever, but if you have a stronger, um, that'd be better, okay? Uh, I don't know where to put this because I don't want it to get on my table. I think alcohol is okay though. And I just take this and I clean like everything. Like this little guy, I haven't used it in so long, I don't know what might be in there. So I'm just gonna clean it. I'm gonna clean everything that I use. That's like that, okay? Anything that's gonna be touching all that other stuff. I'll even run over my brush really quickly with this on another side. This we're really gonna clean with the monomer. Okay, so just make sure everything's nice and clean. And so what I'm gonna start off with is I still need to remove my nail polish. You can see I have polish on. You're gonna push back your cuticles very gently. We're just gonna get right into it, which is 
kind of scary for me. Like I said, I haven't done these in a long time. And then we're gonna scrape away any dead skin that might be on the cuticle, and I have a good little amount. You're gonna take the nail polish off, which I probably should have done to begin with because we need to rough up our nails. So basically I'm gonna go ahead and take the nail polish off my nails, but I'm just gonna show you on this nail. I have my, again, the Dollar Tree's carrying 100% acetone, which is really awesome. That's really what you want. Sometimes some acetone um, or polish removers have conditioners and you don't want that. You want just acetone. So basically, okay, let's go back to this nail just so you see the prep. So push back cuticles, remove any hangnails or anything else that you might have. Take away all that dead skin and then come in with whatever you're gonna use. This is pretty fine. And I really just stick to roughing up the edges all around the cuticle and everything because you're trying to remove the dead skin and you also want the acrylic to stick to something, but you don't have to like rough up all your nail, but if you, you can just do that, okay? So basically you're gonna take the shine off your nail and I'll be right back once I've done all the nails. Okay guys, one thing I did forget to mention is go ahead and trim your nails all the way back. And the reason I forgot to mention that is because normally I don't, but since I've broken so many nails recently, there's no point in keeping any of this. So I'm not trimming them completely back, but you know, just to get most of that free edge gone, okay? You don't really want that in the way. And to clean them up, you can just dust it off or I'm gonna use my NSI Pure Plus because I like it, but if you don't have this, just alcohol, again, is fine. And I used the wrong side, of course. So should, <laughs> these are lymph-free wipes on one side because they're like from CVS. So anyway, so I'm gonna clean off my whole hand. And I probably don't even have to do this part yet, to be honest. Of course, you always wash with nice, clean, washed hands, right? Um, or start with clean, washed hands. I'm gonna bring out this little guy. I used to have a bigger jar that holds monomer because I did nails so often that I would be back in it, you know, a week later. But right now, and I'm talking about those little porcelain jars that I have here. I'm just gonna dip some in here, or put some in here. So I'm gonna put some in here just to be ready. So here's my Omega Liquid Monomer to go with the Omega Powder. They also have a regular powder and monomer that costs less. And to be honest, I don't remember how much of this I normally use, so I'll just put some out. And if I need more, I'll put, you know, I'll put more in here. So I'm gonna have this off to the side when we start. I'm actually gonna cover it for now. And then I do wanna mix our glitter mix with some clear, powder right so i have my clear here i do not like these jars these are the old jars the new jars look something like this and if you order it larger like this larger size it'll be bigger but for right now it, it's like this so when it's um this is a hard gel but it normally looks like this and you unscrew it and you can dip into it you can see what you're doing because the jar is just has a wide mouth but this is the old jar and that's what i have so i'm just going to keep using this for now until it runs out but i have to i might put some of i might put the clear powder in another little one like this because I don't like dipping into this jar like I said but anyway so we're gonna put in let's say two spoonfuls about two full spoonfuls that last one was just to make up for the other one that didn't seem too full and then I'm going to dip into my glitter and then we're gonna size up our dual forms okay ah oh, it's hard to open so I'm just gonna rip it actually ripping it did not help hold on there we go come on out and that's sealed really well. And then she had some little uh, nail art items in there too, but anyway, so really cute little mix. Hopefully, will this focus? I'll wait for it to focus. Come on. Oh my goodness. There. You see all the little bits that are in there? It's really cute. Um, I was just gonna pour it, but you know what? We have to do, it's about 50-50 ratio is what you want of glitter to acrylic, that one kind of. And with dual forms, we're gonna add more acrylic anyway on our own, so it's not like the biggest deal. That looks a lot powdery, so I'm gonna add a little more glitter. You want it to pick up, obviously. When you dip in there, you want the powder to be good enough that you can pick it up. Um, I'm gonna also put some powder into here when I'm ready, but I'll just use my little spoon to do that, so that way I'm dipping into powder that's easy to see, the glitter acrylic our monomer, we have our brush ready. And what we need to do is size up the nails. So you can use obviously two different sets because you can do your left hand then you can do your right hand. Or as they pop off, you do the next hand, but it doesn't really matter. So these have 10 or 12 different sizes, I think, because sometimes people use these for toenails. But what you need to do, they're big enough that you can use them on your toenails, is size up your nails like this one. This might be the one I use. 
So I want you to see that. It does meet sidewall to sidewall, and it's a little bit bigger. Like if I push it down really hard, it's a little bit bigger. What happens is when you put the acrylic in, it starts shrinking up. It just kind of starts pulling away. So as you're putting acrylic in, the acrylic makes it thicker, and when you push it down, I don't know if you can see, there's gonna be a little bit of a space between your nail and the acrylic. So, uh, yes, your nail and the acrylic. So when you push it down, you need a form that's a little bit bigger. So for me, and I have big nails, that's the size one. I think what happens is they have bigger sizes, like zero, yeah, zero. Oh, when you see, it's like a toenail one. It's even bigger. It's really big. So. For me, I'm just gonna size them up. Again, I'm gonna go looking through here and I kind of have an idea. I used to have a set just sitting out, that way I wouldn't have to resize them every time. Once you remember or you know, you know. Like that's too big for that nail. That's good for my middle finger and this is number four. Okay, again, touching sidewall to sidewall but a little bit bigger, okay? If it's right on and that's the best, like the next one you have is way too big, then go ahead and use the one that's right on. But you kind of want it to be just a little bit bigger, okay? So I'll be right back once I have everything uh, measured out and we're gonna start. Okay guys, this is the moment of truth and I am like a little bit scared. I'm not gonna lie. I haven't done this in so long. I feel like nervous about it, but that's okay. So, we already roughed them up. We've cleaned off our nails. If it's been so long because you're doing other things like I was, you just give it another little wipe and let that kind of dry up. I have all my nails here and we're just gonna get started. Usually my ring and pointer finger are the same. That's why they give you an extra set of number five because that's a very popular nail size. Um, but today I'm gonna use a five and a six, so we'll see. Okay, so ready to go. I'm going to do, apply my primer. Now you don't want your nails sopping wet in primer. So when you get it, just, you know, kind of wipe it there. Especially don't get it on your skin because that's when people start getting allergies to primer and then you're gonna start not being able to wear nails because your skin does not like it okay so always be very careful with acrylic everything you don't want to get that all sopping all over your skin and i'm putting two coats of primer so i just put one coat i'm gonna go in okay and to make me more nervous my son just called because his class was canceled he has a teacher that's always canceling class i'm like when i was in college teachers never canceled class like that was a no-no and I know if you were there and they weren't there and within 10 minutes you could leave and <laughs> we were always excited but that never happened really either we're like ah oh, they're just late okay so I'm gonna take my brush I have the second layer of um oh my gosh you guys I have the second layer of uh primer on there and I used to not be nervous back in the day you guys know that I just did the nails it was fun I forgot to put my acrylic cook in here I'll probably do this off camera. Every nail is going to be the same. So I'm going to show you one nail and then that's it. But I do have other videos where I do different techniques with the dual forms. And if I have any old school traditional videos, I will have links for those. I think I do have a couple. And what I mean by that is like either sculptured or with a tip, right? So I'm going to take this off and you always want to have a nice area. I'm going to dip my brush. See the bubbles are coming out. I don't know if you can see that in this top corner. And just, I'm going to give it a wipe because I haven't used this in a while. And again, this brush is kind of crazy, but anyway, so you're gonna get your, dip it in your monomer so you don't have bubbles anymore, right? And then you're gonna kind of wipe the excess as you're coming out. And when you come, what we're gonna do is get our dual form and we're gonna fill the nail. This is the bottom of the nail and this is the top. I'm gonna take some acrylic. This is the, um, the glitter mix. And I'm gonna lay it out here it's a little bit dry, so since it's dry, I'm gonna wipe it off before I dip in my monomer again. And it was a little too dry, so I just needed to remove some of that. Now I'm gonna get some more monomer, get back into my acrylic, get a little more. We're basically gonna fill in this nail. Now I know I'm gonna keep chatting with you as I do this because <laughs> I want you guys to understand. So pick, a, pick on these, they have lines. Which line, how long do you want your nails? Oopsie and then start filling it in. So I'm pushing away from the middle out towards the edges, keeping it thin. You do not want to fill in this whole middle well because you want a nice C-curve. The C-curve is what keeps the nail strong and from breaking, okay? So you don't want to just fill that in. If that's all filled in, you're not going to have a nice arch and it's just going to break. I have another video on different tips on these. I will definitely link for you guys. And you want to make sure your little glitter is all there. And if there's a certain shape in your glitter that you want to be seeing, like these little hearts, push it all the way through. Because if you look on this backside, sometimes only the bigger pieces want to show up. I'm sorry, the, the smaller pieces. 
So I'm shaping it, I'm keeping it super flat and I think that's pretty good. Now I don't know if you can see, I kind of made it an, old, an almond shape. And you can keep shaping that and of course when we're done we are going to um, file all that too. So make a nice almond shape. Okay, clean off my brush, get a little more monomer, and this time we're going to go in with a good amount, not a good amount, like, a, you know, your um, powder, good consistency, I hope you can see, it's kind of, it's not too thick, it's not dry, so it's not like powder on top, it's not dripping off my brush, because that's not good either, it's a nice consistency. We're going to place it kind of in the middle here, and I'm going to get a little more monomer, and basically this is what we're going to do to adhere it to our nail. So I need a little bit more up at the tip. And the reason I'm not putting a whole bunch at the tip, I'll tell you, is because a lot of the times what happens is this bottom part squishes out. This bottom area squishes out. And then that's basically what's going to... Um, you'll, you'll see what I'm going to talk about just right now. So I kind of filled it in again, leaving a nice space. And we're going to bring it to our nail and push it down. And I'm just going to hold it. I'm not really applying a lot of pressure. If you have any kind of nail and you have some pressure, it is going to cut into the acrylic and you're going to be in trouble. So I'm holding it down. Hopefully it's straight. If anything came out, which I judged that perfectly, if anything comes out the side, you just get something, some kind of tool to scrape it away immediately, okay? Because that's going to cause lifting later. You, know, you have to file it. It's easier just to scrape it away while your nail is still wet. And after holding it down for just a few seconds, it'll hold on to itself. Now, what I like to do is turn it over. I get my brush a little bit wet and just whatever squeezed out, just comb it up towards the tip of the nail. So even though you're basically making a sculptured nail, but kind of backwards. So you just want to make sure that you have enough acrylic in there that's not going to break on you later. You don't want a super thick, but you know, you want a good, nicely formed nail. And that's it guys. And then, like I said, I can let go of it now. It's going to stay on my nail. If you see that there's air bubbles, especially if you're just doing clear because you're not doing glitter, you're just making it clear because whatever. Um, you're going to put polish on it later or something more simple, which I have videos on that. Um, if you see there's an air bubble, the best thing is to do is take it off, to be honest. Just take it off, add more, you know, clean everything out and do it again. Because if you have an air bubble, that might cause mold or something to grow under there, right? So we don't want that. Again, I can let it go and I can move on to the next nail. So maybe I'll do one more for you guys just because that was kind of quick. So I'm going to add my second layer of primer, pick up the next nail, get some of that acrylic, sorry, the monomer. And I'm just going to push it up. So that was a good consistency. Remember earlier I had to get a little more because it was too dry. And now that's pretty good. I can see that's going to be okay. So I'm letting it kind of set up just a little bit before I really mess with it. Because if I start messing with it, um, it's quite possible that it's just too wet anyway. So you're just messing, messing. So let it kind of set up a little bit so that you can spread it from side to side. Sidewall to sidewall, all the way down to the bottom. Wow. And that quickly, I got my mojo back. I'm just going to... These nails are going to be very clear, which I think is really fun. And I went all the way to the last height, but that also means I can pull it back if I want to, right? If I decide that, you know, that's too, uh, I need a little bit more. If it's too long, obviously we can trim them back. It's better to have too long than too short and then regret. And I kind of want to try, oh, that's okay, okay. So I'm going to make sure there's glitter all the way down to the bottom, letting that set up just a little bit, and then I'm going to grab the acrylic. The acrylic that's going to stick it to my nail that's also there to reinforce. I'm just adding a little more here. I'm going to add just a little bit more. I'd rather it squeeze out than to not have enough, but at the same time, you want to be careful. Okay, so I'm just letting it set up just a little bit as I'm chatting with you guys. And then we're going to flip it over, bring it all the way to your cuticle, and then press it down. Again, I don't press down too crazy, like I'm using the force of this finger to hold it down. That way I can come in, um, doesn't really have much to squeeze out. 
Make sure it's as close to your cuticle as you can get it. And straight, that's a big deal. <laughs> Not much squeezed out. And I'll wait a few seconds chatting with you guys. This is really fun. I told my son, I'm like, oh, what time do I gotta pick you up? And he said 11.20, which is basically two hours. I'm like, oh, I might still be doing this in two hours, but you know what, I don't think so, because well, how long has it been? A couple minutes? Well, probably a few minutes <laughs> where you have two nails done. And again, whatever might squish out here, just use that to help you reinforce your nail. So as you can see, I dipped in the monomer, and then I came in here and kind of pushed whatever came out this way up towards the middle, up towards the nail. Okay, and I'm gonna move on. Okay guys, so I'm finishing up with my pinky nail and I'm holding it down for a little while, you know, and then again, scraping away whatever is necessary and then just kind of brushing up, again, whatever acrylic popped out the bottom. And that just helps reinforce the tip of your nail. And then if you see that your tip of your nail still needs a little more possibly, then you can grab whatever more. It's better to have, like I said, let it squish out, but then if you need more, Go in and do that. Hopefully I have enough glitter. That tip looks a little funny. I'm gonna put a little more glitter mix there. Looks a little too clear on the side so it looks like there's nothing there. Okay, so I just reinforced a little more glitter too. All right, I'm gonna leave that alone. And I probably could have taken this off minutes ago, but I just wanted to show you, sometimes you can tell, you can hear that. But also, they feel kind of warm to the touch if they're still hardening. But when it's done, all you have to do is take your end and just give it a little twist. And it pops off. And look how shiny that is. That's why you don't need top coat. I do have a top coat out because what happens is, let's say you did your nails and um, they were just kind of rough around the cuticle or anything else. Supposedly, I remember a wise nails lady saying that you should come around anyway and seal the cuticle is what she called. Say out of... Um, La cuticula, right? In Spanish, because it was Mexican, they're Spanish videos. Um, which means that you would come in here with your file, like a regular file, and just file all around the tip, the base of the nail. Now, if you did a good job and you don't have anything really sticking up, then you don't have to do that. I don't, I can't tell quite yet. I might have to do that. Um, but if you do, then you're gonna just take the shine off the whole nail. There's no point in leaving it shiny, and then go ahead and put some UV gel top coat or nail polish if it was were just clear whatever you want to do to move on um but we'll talk about that more in a minute once we're all done so i've done this whole hand and i could probably just finish up with this hand but i kind of want to have the whole hand done the other hand so i can talk about it at that point so um my thumbnail is definitely going to come down i just showed it to you as long as it is but i don't normally keep my thumbnails as long as the rest of the nails because it's just you know it gets in the way <laughs> so i will bring that down and we'll file these to a shape and then that'll be it Real quickly, I do want to show you the charm also of dual forms is that I'm almost ready to put this on my thumbnail. I'm building it up, I'm working on it, and then I put it on my non-dominant hand, or my dominant hand, because you can work on this yourself, right? You don't have to be afraid that you're gonna mess up your dominant hand when you use your non-dominant hand to work on the other hand, right? So you've built it up just like you did everything else. And, um, and it was easy, right? Instead of, see this one, I need to really push it down on the back side. Um, Cause you can use your dominant hand to make the nail and then just apply it and same pressure like I did with the, before with my other nail or other hand or finger, should I say, holding it down. All right. Okay guys, that's the last couple nails are still setting up and drying. Um, just again, you know, as you're holding it down and then you always want to come in with your little monitor, clean that up and then just do that and that is easier clean up with your non-dominant hand than doing the whole shaping your whole nail right i just wanted to show you how much monomer was left which is basically nothing <laughs> so that was a good uh, the little cup that i have here basically held it all this is how much clear acrylic was left and you can pour this back into your bottle especially if you're using it just on yourself and then this is the um, little bit of the glitter mix that was left not too much but so yeah two or two and a half little scoops basically did the whole set um, it doesn't take much it does it goes really far so again what I would normally do with this guy is really just clean it out with more monomer and just wipe it away and I want you to notice my brush isn't all clumpy with any kind of mon with, uh, acrylic or anything and there's nothing 
extra in my monomer. There's a little bit of a glitter there, but it's because I always clean off before I dip it back in. And people, I remember, especially beginners, always complain about that. They're like, how do you keep it so clean? Or what am I doing wrong? You know, you dip in your monomer, you clean it off, dip in your monomer, dip into your acrylic, use it, wipe it off, then dip into the monomer. The monomer kind of helps you clean, but also just keeps your brush nice, you know, as you're using it. So, you know, I used the glitter, I wiped it off, then I dipped into there to get more of whatever I was gonna get. Always wipe off and then dip back into your monomer just to kind of keep it nice, your brush too. I already put away the primer. So basically I'm waiting for these two nails to finish up, but what you're gonna do now is shape your nail. Cause obviously this is not what we want. It's kind of like not shaped exactly correct as you can see all that extra. If you were doing them just square, you know, I didn't mention it, but if you just fill in just square, that's fine too. Obviously that's what they're meant for. Um, and then if you change your mind after you make them square that you want them pointy or almond shape or ballerina shape, then just shape them. It doesn't, you can do that. I just don't like wasting the acrylic. I'm not gonna put this much acrylic, right? To make them straight and square and then shave it all off. So for me, this is hard to do because of my, still have the other nails on, but I'm just gonna come in and just come from side edge, the side wall or whatever you wanna call it. You always, always, always wanna keep that flush and then go to the tip of the nail. And then from the other side, and you guys have probably gotten your nails done before. You know how they do, they can, sometimes they go this way, this way, this way, this way, until they get it shaped exactly how you want it. I'm not gonna sit here and show you guys this one, because like I said, I'm gonna trim this one back a whole lot, but like, let's say you came into this one. So just make sure your finger's not stuck to any kind of acrylic on this side. And just do a nice flat, again, this side, and then, just whatever shape you want. So if you want it more stiletto, make it super pointy. If you want it more almond, just round it out until your almond shape. So I'll figure out the shape. I'm not sure what I want to do. I'm probably actually going to go outside and just stand up outside and do this because I hate getting all the little fluffy things that fly in the air all over the place. But um, I do my, I don't know. I'll come back and show you what I decided as far as how pointy I want these to be. Okay guys, I'm pretty much done. I just want to show you, I did only use one set just the one hand I measured, but again, it's because these start drying by the time you're over here. And I want to tell you, it has been, I was trying to see the timing on this because I haven't done nails in, like I said, almost two years. And dual forms are super fast, they're super fun. I know my son had just texted me when I was sat down to get started. So he texted me at 9.20 and it's 10.36 right now. And the longest, what I feel took the longest was the actual shaping, just to file it down and make sure it looks nice. So. Again, different types of nails require different shaping angles. So if you're just gonna keep it straight and, you know, square, then you just come in on the side like this, right? Just a little bit underneath, you know, just to make sure it's nice. This, um, because it's more of a almond but pointy tip, is a sharp angle in, okay? Sharp, sharp, sharp from like where your nail stops in, really sharp. And so that's why you kind of file it underneath and coming in like this, okay? Um, you can make it super pointy. I kind of wanted them a little bit rounded because I do have kids and I have other things to do and I don't want to poke myself or them. Um, and then I'm just gonna take a buffer real quick, just something softer to come around and get rid of those little rough edges. I'm going to go wash my hands. We'll put on some cuticle oil and we are done, you guys. Um, the reason I'm not doing any else, anything else is, well, because it's been a while. I don't really feel like doing 3D artwork. If I add it to the nails, I will make another video about that. If you still have a lot of acrylic out the edge on this backside because you didn't do a very good job or just a lot came out and, or you're starting out, I don't wanna say you didn't do a good job, <laughs> but how is if you, like I said, when you press it down, you wanna come in and clean it up. And if some still sneaks out, like there's a little bit here and you don't like it, then bring in your file and just clean up that cuticle. Flatten that out so it's nice. But when you do that, you're gonna go ahead and just remove the shine off the whole nail. It's already shaped perfectly smooth for you, right? Sorry about the lighting. Um, and then just put on a top coat. Um, if you wanna use just regular clear polish, that most people use a UV type gel. And then put on your gel and you're good to go. Um, if you want these to be shinier, like see underneath, the acrylic dries a certain way because it wasn't the form, where the form hits, it makes it shiny. Obviously it doesn't hit this bottom side. So if you wanna come in here with some clear polish just to make the sh nail shinier, do that. Um, again, UV gel, put it on there put it in your lamp, uh, 3D artwork. I mean, this is just a good basics to do anything, but I'll be right back and we'll just be real done. quick, remember that little amount of monomer that was left in here? And you can just leave it open, it'll dry out, but at the same time, I just take, cause it's a little bit, okay? You don't want to just dump monomer or pour it in your um, 
you shouldn't just pour it into like your uh, trash can or anything like that. But um, that's how I get rid of it, okay? So safely, for the most part, it was very small amount. And then okay, you can clean up your equipment when you're done. And the last thing we need is some cuticle oil. This is really fun. I know when Miranda gets home, my five-year-old, she's gonna be like, oh, mama, your pretty nails are so pretty because that's she loves anything girly and nails. Um, but hopefully I'll keep it up because my nails, they were kind of breaking a lot anyway. So next time, ooh, we'll change up maybe the, obviously we'll change up the design. But thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was fun for you. If you're new, if you have any questions, like I said, I'll put links to a lot of older videos that I've had. But, um, but hopefully you'll see that these are easy. They're so easy and they're sturdy. As long as you form them right, like I showed you, do not let them fill in. I hope you can see that C curve on my nails. Oh, it's hard to, uh, let me see. Oh, I need to spin that acrylic out. <laughs> anyway, um, you can still see a definite C curve in my nails and see how this nail, I can poke in there. If this is all full of acrylic to here, they're gonna snap off really fast. So just make sure you're building that nice C curve. You're keeping the acrylic kind of thin. It doesn't have to be super thick because by the time you're done, look at this. I mean, they're not thin. They're not gonna break. Um, sorry, I had to open my window because, you know, I don't want the smell upstairs and everywhere else. Look, I just used actually my nails to open the door because I couldn't get in there, so I just used my nails like this and it was just fine, the sliding glass door. So, anyway, I hope that helps you guys. Um, I'm really looking forward to doing many more videos because like I said, now that I have the time and I always like doing nails. So hopefully if I find more of my old videos that were taken with my old channel, I'll try to re-upload them, but for now, I think we should just move forward. Um, Before I go, I guess this is partial uh, review of these, but I knew they were gonna do a great job. So they're really nice. People love these forms because they have the lines. So you don't have to draw your own line. Like with the ASP dual forms, they don't have any lines or anything. They're just, you know, poppets, little pieces of plastic. And so again, these are better in that they have a nicer curve too. Let me hold this so you can see it better. They have a nicer curve to them. They're really, really curved if you compare these with other dual forms so they give you that nice C curve um, and then like I said they have the little lines on there so you can kind of know how high or you know choose one and then always go to that line or go all the way to the top some people like to do that and those are some really long nails um, I just want to mention it was kind of funny with the design options I told you if you wanted the hearts to show or anything else ooh, like that to show you need to push it really push it through the acrylic so it touches the um, the dual form, right? And then I noticed how funny, this one had two blue, two hearts, they're blue. This one has one red. Two hearts, they're gold, okay? Two hearts, they're red. <laughs> two, one heart's orange. And I'm like, hey, I didn't plan that. And if I, to be honest, if I had noticed, I probably would have tried to mix up the colors. But that's kind of funny how it just ended up that way. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope um, you learned a little something and let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you guys at the next one. Bye now.